call it your girl Adiola. So this is one of those situations you tell yourself, this is not really happening, but it is. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Inspector General of Police in Nigeria, that is our ogre in the law, Sir Ibrahim Idris, was struggling to read a speech. Cult cultivative, I mean, cultivative transmission. Transmission and transmission, I mean. At the transmission of health prevention and detection and transmission and transmission for the effective of the transmission of the Niger police force. Stop, stop, stop. How did this happen? Sorry, sir. Transmission, transmission. I mean, the transmission. I mean, the I mean, transmission. I mean, to have effect and kidnapping transmission. I mean, the I mean, transmission. The man was in Kano to commission the police technical intelligence unit only for him to keep repeating transmission and transmission, submission, apprehensive transmission. Transmission and transmission. They had it the first time. What is wrong with you? This is actually not funny. This is not funny because the man has a bachelor's in agriculture and another degree in law. So he definitely knows how to read. And prior to this incident, he reads fluently. Police officers were from Defense Works Association, Naowa, Nafua, Noah and wife of head of other security and safety agencies. Thank you very much. Some people are saying that the video was doctored, like our mother in the Lord, my Mia Bikeda Bili. On behalf of the presidency, they said the video was doctored. Me, I don't think it was doctored because if you watch it from the beginning when he was greeting the audience, there's a consistency to the voice and the tone in the video. The commercial police, I mean, the AG in charge of uh, Polak. Police Academy, who is here with us this afternoon. And if he was doctored, why would somebody stand next to him to help him to read? And he was still making mistakes even when the person was trying to help him. All kidnapping, transmission, transmission, all the effective transmission, transmission. Something deeper is happening here. This is not ordinary. Now, there are some people that are saying that it is the people of Dino Melaye's village that are after this man, implying that Dino Melaye is using black magic or, you know, voodoo, juju, to embarrass the man for having him arrested. Me, I don't think so because if you are following my uncle on social media uncle Dino Melai you know that all he does is to preach <laughs> yes Dino likes to preach you know on Twitter and he will quote Bible verses and then of course he will show off his latest cars you know yes so that is all he does so being a social media pastor that uh, Dino Melai is I don't think that he would want to embarrass this man using juju <laughs> using voodoo if anything he will probably pray for him amen somebody so others are saying that the man was drunk me i don't think so because i mean he's probably a devoted muslim that has never tasted alcohol in his life <laughs> excuse me it's just <laughs> Sometimes I need water. And if you look at the video, it looks too early for anybody to get drunk. So I hope he wasn't having some medical emergency. I hope he doesn't have stroke and stuff like that because this doesn't look ordinary. So if anybody is watching me that is close to the man, please tell him to have a thorough medical checkup so that we can know what is going on. In fact, by now, I thought he would have released a statement to say exactly what happened that day because ah, we are all very worried for him. Uh, you know, do well, Jale, my yoga. I hope that you are watching. Please do not mind enemies of progress or the people that are laughing making fun of you they don't know what it's like to be in your shoes they don't even know what you are dealing with right now you have a lot going on on your mind so please feel free to call me anytime i'm on speed that if you need to talk if you need therapy call me anytime you know i'm your girl having said that uh oga igp now that we have uh, defended you in front of all the enemies of progress you know we have to talk about your conduct because you've been acting like you're above the law lately so you understand you know i'm the only one that will tell you the truth so please move closer it's okay you can thank me later the other time when herds men killed more than 70 people People in Bain wasted. Buhari ordered this man to move there. He didn't go. He went, he spent like a day and then he left. Can you imagine? And then Buhari said he didn't know that the man disobeyed his order. <laughs> which is a topic for another day by the way is it that you didn't know or you can't hold him accountable because they are two different things and if really you didn't know then you clearly didn't care about the people of Benway State not only that the Senate summoned the Inspector General of Police over Dino Melaye's drama with the police you guys remember the drama by the roadside I'm going to kill myself was anybody begging to know that day by the way anyway the Senate ordered this man to show up to talk about what happened to Dino Melaye he did not show up. Can you imagine? He stood up the Senate. What? What? Which is why some people are saying that it is Dino Melaye that is after the man. Me, I don't think so. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I told you, Dino Malaye speaks in tongue on Twitter. But you know, it wasn't just to talk about Dino Malaye. They also wanted to query this man about the senseless killings across Nigeria. Because this year alone, more than 1,000 people have been killed, mostly in Benue State. We're talking about deaths that could have been prevented. You know, like what happened in Kwara State where so many people died in of uh, armed robbery. Meanwhile, almost half of our policemen and women are now escorts for rich people and politicians. Have you noticed? You know, we have about 400,000 police officers for a population of 180 million people. That in itself is a problem. We need more police officers. And then of the 400,000 that we have, more than 150,000 are attached to VIPs and unauthorized persons in the country as escorts. You will see them protecting rich people as bodyguards. You will see them carrying purses for big madams as in this is this is really sad you know in other countries presidents even the pope carries his own post except nigeria you know a lot of them hold umbrellas for the chinese people the indians and other foreigners in nigeria ah baba can i just say and if you live in china please prove me wrong because i may be wrong but i don't think you would ever see a chinese police officer holding umbrella for a black person for an african in china and those that are not attached to vips they like to take money from drivers by the roadside so who is really left to protect the common people which is why whenever there is robbery in nigeria have you noticed that if you call the police you know a lot of times they would wait they will wait until the robbery is over before they show up you can't blame them <laughs> <laughs> you can't blame them. First of all, they don't have enough weapons. And the ones that they have are not modernized. Meanwhile, the thieves are carrying sophisticated weapons. Our police officers don't have sophisticated weapons. So you cannot blame them if they don't show up on time. And it's not just that. No offense to anybody, but a lot of our police officers are no longer physically fit. I mean, how do you run after criminals with a big belly? Have you been seeing those pictures? It is it's very, very embarrassing. Oh, this is not to generalize because, because there are some police officers that are physically fit. I mean, you see them looking fine, looking fly, but some of them, they, they don't even care. So you cannot understand why Nigerian police is rated as the worst in the world. Now, earlier this year, the IGP, the Inspector General of Police, he said he would withdraw all these VIP officers so that our officers would no longer <laughs> be escorts, you know? And then later he came out and said he cannot do so, which means our police officers will continue to hold umbrellas and carry purses for the big madams. But me, I'm not surprised because even a lot of our senators, they use policemen and women like house help. So they probably will not support the removal of policemen and women as escorts. So anyway, talking about the senator, less killings going on in Nigeria was one of the reasons why they invited this man and he did not show up. I don't know why the Senate is afraid of him by the way. They went to report him to Buari and I'm like, look at these senators. Hey, oh, Uncle Bukola and you were, you were dead. Maybe you have the budget in your hands. No, so all you have to do is announce that you will take out the allowance for the police force. The man will come running to the Senate immediately. And then this happened. I want to know what you guys think. If you say that this was doctored, please share the original one with us because we have been looking for it. The presidency telling us that this was doctored, then they should produce the one that is not doctored. It doesn't look doctored to me, but I'm open to hear what you guys think. Anyway, you guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Kenya. Did you guys hear about the wedding that was not meant to be? Hmm, fata. Ladies and gentlemen, there was drama last month when a woman showed up at a wedding claiming to be the groom's wife of 13 years. They built well from zero and he threw her out of the house just because he's the one who is in charge of the money. He thinks my sister does not have a right. Because hmm. apparently, you know, it's a long video. Let me just tell you what happened. Apparently, the man was married to this woman, but not just that, he's HIV positive, which he knew before he married her because that was what killed his first wife. Can you imagine? So, after the first wife died of AIDS, was when he married this woman and transmitted the virus to her. We are just here to spread the news that this man is a serial AIDS spreader, he spreads AIDS to women. I he infected my sister and then dumped her. Hey, what? Knowing that you are HIV positive and you did not tell the person you called your wife. Ah, some people are wicked. Father, hmm. Holy Ghost fire. You must always pray, my people. Before you say I do to anybody, make sure you are not entering into a death trap. I'm telling you, some people are so wicked. Because my dad knew that he had he had AIDS and he didn't want to tell my mom. He'd send her to a specific hospital, my to a specific was. doctor. Hey, so that she, the doctor would not disclose. So he would send her to one specific doctor all the time, even while she was pregnant. Can you imagine? Until. He's even putting a small baby at risk. You see? So the husband and the doctor made sure that she didn't know that she's HIV positive 
for years well, that is wickedness on another level knowing that it could lead to her death until one day she went to another doctor because she wasn't getting better no matter how many times she went to the hospital and that other doctor told her that she was HIV positive and then she comforted the husband about it and she said he didn't even ask surprise that he said he knew he knew he knew very well even the first wife died of AIDS. When the results came out positive, he was not shocked. My mom was almost falling. I didn't even know. And him, he was just there. That's a criminal. That's, that's equivalent to a murderer. I'm like, what? That was like intentionally wanting to kill somebody. No, so I remember once I walked in the house and my mom was laying down there with a pool of blood around her. I, I honestly thought my mother was dead. He's broken my mother's legs a few times so that she cannot leave the house. After I witnessed him beating my mother, I told him I'd go to the police station. He said, go, I can pay them. This is their daughter, by the way, saying that he also abandoned his children and they've had to take care of themselves. School, they're calling me, they're telling you, hey, yo, you're dead. Your debt is becoming too much and it's accumulating every day. How will you pay it? I told them the story. I literally broke down in front of in front of the lecturers. Wow, stuff's are happening, my people. Please make sure you shine your eye well well. If you want to get married, my people, you know, marriage is beautiful. Oh, father. But you know, I cannot stress this enough that you should do your homework. Please do your homework. Don't be carried away by beauty or money because you may be in for a surprise. Because in this story, marriage is what made this woman's life turn to what it is today. And I, I really feel bad for her. My sister was very beautiful. This is not my sister. It's not her. If you knew how she was so beautiful the and so big. Beautiful woman this girl wanted to commit suicide. What right does he have to do this to anybody? Can you imagine? Now you can trust my people, even though the wedding did not go as planned. They made sure the food was not wasted. The wedding never took place, but that did not stop the few guests still present at the venue from enjoying the meal that had already been prepared. I mean, the food was already cooked, so why not? But like I said earlier, make you not shine your eye well, well. And please don't let anybody rush you into marriage. Please do not say, well, you're getting close to 30 or you are in your 30s. My sister, you know, if God should prolong your life, you will end up being married for more years than you have actually lived before you get married. So you don't want to rush into it and then spend the rest of your life thinking, why did I do this? But if you marry your best friend, someone that truly loves you every day would be like heaven amen somebody you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real moving on to south africa so this video is actually not recent it's actually from 2016 but i want to know what you think about it i'm not answerable to any white person i'm like nigerians to white people nigerians don't tolerate any nonsense that comes their way and that's why there are not so many white people in nigeria but, uh, for that nigerians don't take nonsense Woo, for that please play that one more time nigerians don't tolerate any nonsense that comes their way so um is that true that we don't take nonsense they think the nigerians are not polite people to work with but that is not the case the nigerians don't tolerate nonsense and every time they answer you you will think they are fighting they are not fighting they are emphatic they know what they want Okay, I mean, okay, so personally, I agree and I also disagree. So you understand? In some situations, it's true that Nigerians don't take crap from others. At the same time, in so many ways, we actually do take crap. For example, we allow foreigners to come into our country and treat us anyhow. I've talked about this on my show before. Indian factories maltreating people in Nigeria. Remember La Casira that fired more than 700 workers in one day without notice in 2015? Chinese farms owing workers salaries. And I've also talked about the Lebanese his boss that beat up his pregnant employee and she lost the pregnancy even some south african owned companies in nigeria are maltreating their workers so yes malema we actually do take crap to an extent i don't know what it is but some nigerians still see a lighter skin as superior i i don't know why some say it is colonial mentality but this is 2018 when will people wake up and realize nobody is better than you because of the color of their skin meanwhile my brother i'm sure you're aware that a lot of nigerians have been killed in south africa Africa, you get what I'm saying? Maybe that is what we should be talking about, the xenophobic attack against other Africans in South Africa. You get what I'm saying? Which is why I always talk on this show about the importance of us fixing our country. And that brings me to the one that pains me the most, which is the crap that we take from our government officials. Mm, father, you know, we allow a few people that we elected, we are the ones that elected these people. We put them there. We are the ones paying their salaries. Yet we allow them to enrich themselves at our expense. And they are destroying the future of our children in Nigeria. 
Nigeria. A lot of us will not challenge them when we see them. In fact, we will start greeting them, doing around Kadede. But if we see somebody stand up to challenge them, then we start abusing that person. Oh, he was paid by so so, or she was paid by so so so. Meanwhile, these officials, they don't discriminate when they are sharing the national cake. But you know, back to the video by Malema, I really want to know what you guys think about this. Like I said, I agree to some extent. We hustle and we don't always put up with crap. You know, shout out to all my Nigerians living abroad. You know, I do well. Thank you for making us proud. So I want to know what you guys think about Malema's statement. And if you are a Nigerian living outside Nigeria, what's your experience like in the country where you live? If you are not a Nigerian and you've met Nigerians, you know, like me, you've met me. What do you think about Malema's statement? I'd like to know what you guys think. Please do not be abusing each other in the comment section. <laughs> I just want to know what you guys think about that statement. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So I have some good news for all my Nigerian people living in America. Yes, I told you I got your back. Yes, so you can now send money to Nigeria using wave money transfer right on your cell phone. Say what? Finally, my Nigerian people can enjoy the convenience of using Wave to send money back home because it is free. That's the it is free. You are not paying for the transfer. You just send the money. And not only that, their exchange rate is actually higher than the other money transfer companies. As in, you see why you have to use Wave. They have the best exchange rate and it is free. So they've been operating now for years, making it possible for people to send mobile money to Ghana, Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. So if you are from any of these countries and you're living abroad, please use Wave to send money back home. <laughs> people would love you because they can get it instantly on their cell phone and now they have open shop in nigeria even somebody so the only thing is if you are sending money to nigeria you can only send to a bank account not a cell phone so you understand so all you need is the receiver's account number and the name that is on that account number and then you can send the money and they get it instantly you don't have to go to any agent any time of the day even in the middle of the night if you wake up and feel like sending money home you can just use your cell phone to send the money to the person as a matter of fact if you're living in america and you have a bank account in Nigeria you can use this app to send money to your own personal account yeah so instead of carrying a huge amount of money when you are flying home you can just send it to yourself before you leave and the best part of this is the fact that I already told you guys that your girl is partnering with wave yes so if you use my name Adeola as a promo code when you sign up for the first time they will send extra five dollars to your loved ones as in who doesn't want an extra five dollars but you have to enter my name during the first transaction if not, you will lose the $5. It's not possible to, to send some money and then come back to try to enter my name. You already lose the $5. I told you I got you. I can give you my Nigerian bank account if you need to test it out. So if you're watching this show from Nigeria and you have an uncle in Texas, you can just call him. Uncle Debo, I beg, send me $5 through Wave so that they can send me an extra $5. That is almost $4,000 right there. So... <laughs> So for my Nigerian people in Europe, please do not worry. It is coming to you. Like I said, I got you. So you understand, we are taking it one step at a time. It is still coming to Europe. Right now, it's only for Nigerians living in America. So if that's you, download the app today. It's called Wave. Make sure that you look for the app that looks like this. And don't forget to use my name as promo code Adeola. That is the cocoa. <laughs> anyway, you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Before I sign out, I can hear some of you asking how I styled my hair this week. Yes, it's okay, girlfriend. I got you, boo. So, <laughs> so I made a video of that when I was styling it. Make sure you check it out. All right, y'all. It's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, thank you very much in advance for subscribing. <laughs> Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.